Mapping is a key aspect of uh, IoT application, and today on the IoT Show, we have Chris Pendleton from the Azure Maps team, who's going to tell us everything about what's going on in that realm. The whole world. The whole world of maps. Hi everyone, this is the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today we have Chris Pendleton from the Azure Maps team. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely, thanks for having me. So, you've been on some shows on Channel Line, Azure Fridays, other things, but still, how about you introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, you may recognize me from previous shows. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm Chris Pendleton, I run the program management team for Azure Maps. And we actually will talk exactly about that. What is Azure Maps? Yeah. So question. where is it coming from? Why did we start that? It GA'd last May, right? Correct. Uh, which is like six months ago. Something like that. <laughs> My <Yeah>. math is <laughs> approximative, <laughs> but that's fine. Yeah. So why did we actually create that, uh, that service for mapping? Yeah, so we wanted to have location in the Azure Cloud, natively in the Azure Cloud. And that's an important facet of our enterprise customer offering. And so mm -hmm. when we talk about location, it's inherent in just about everything we do. Mm -hmm. um, and when, when I joined the IoT team, in fact, um, it was uh, a precursor for one, having a horizontal layer of location capabilities native to the Azure Cloud, but also um, getting into mobility. So a direct vertical integration with location for mobility. And so the reason that we started this was we saw a lot of enterprise customers onboarding to the Azure Cloud, mm -hmm. and they needed these location capabilities natively built in. And so when I say natively built in, it's impor that's an important factor that um, in order to use Azure Maps, you just spin up your Azure subscription, okay. and you fire up an account, and boom, you're off and running. There's no license negotiations. There's no pricing negotiation. Like okay. It's all built into it's all your... It's abstracted. Yeah. yeah. Built into your application. Yeah. It's built on, on Azure. Exactly. And so, um, who actually would be interested in using Maps? You'd be surprised. Yeah. Uh, everybody uses Maps in one way or another, or at least yep. location data. Mm -hmm. And so, Maps, uh, Azure Maps actually goes well beyond just Maps. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a location platform. Yeah. And so, it has um, built-in capabilities for search, if you want to find addresses, if you mm -hmm. want to find places, if you yeah, want to yeah. find business listings. Mm -hmm. It has, uh, obviously, the rendering canvas, which comes in many different shades mm -hmm. and colors. Uh, and it has uh, routing capabilities, so not just find places, but find me how to get there. And routing is a whole deep well of fun algorithms in and of itself, right? We've mm -hmm. got you know, multi-point routing. So if I have three stops, I mm -hmm. want to do them in order. Or route optimization. I want to, uh, you tell me what order I should do my stops in. So mm -hmm. I've got 15 stops along my route. Tell me the best order, and we'll do that for you. Yeah. Isochrone, so the route range, like I'm here, Tell me all the different places I can get to in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and that mm -hmm. ends up creating a polygon. Um, and then our traffic service as well. So there's, there's actually quite a bit in mm -hmm. the Azure Maps platform yeah. when it comes to location and maps. Um, it's just maps is, is yeah. a significant so it's not It's different. not just like a, a, an actual map with geolocation information that you have to build your algorithms on top of or with, right? So you basically leverage a set of APIs, very rich APIs that gives you that functionality, a set of functionality. Yeah, right? we like to say it's more than a map. Yeah. Yeah, so it is a map, but it's more that it's much more than a map. And uh, in fact, the, the capabilities that we've, we, we now have mm -hmm. really start to enrich uh, the API set and the yeah. capabilities that people can do with those maps and that location information set. Okay. So um, I should mention that um, the impetus for Azure Maps, uh, you know, did start with partnerships. So we didn't like start reinventing maps from open sources. We didn't start, you know, trying to build our own maps again. Mm -hmm. This is a very partner-led strategy. Okay. And so what we did was we have uh, an agreement. We have a partnership with a company called TomTom, a yep. little company out of uh, the Netherlands. And um, they agreed to move their services into the Azure Cloud. So okay. now natively within the Azure Cloud, uh, we have uh, TomTom services for search, maps, routing, and traffic mm. all running. And they become a part of what is now the yeah, Azure Maps family right. of, of services. Yeah. And so that's an important factor because as you're building Azure applications, you're building enterprise applications, you want that confidence that your data doesn't leave that cloud. I was about to ask, Ashley, because Maps is about, well, the mapping 
itself, but then it's about data as well, right? You wanna you wanna geolocalize a device and eventually uh, put in context that device, or you wanna you wanna add your own data into that con and leverage others' data, like you were talking about uh, when we were preparing. You're talking about having, for example, on a route, you know, a search for you know uh, gas stations. Exactly. Uh, the data comes from somewhere, so you have kind of like combination of this data, like in your apps, uh, you know, around the map. That's right. Right, and that scenario that you're speaking of, you know, we have uh, we have the maps and we have the spatial capabilities and we yeah. have the routing engine. So, in order to meet, in order to make that specific scenario, mm -hmm. we actually would make a route call to find the route geometry yeah. and then set a buffer. Maybe it's a quarter mile around mm -hmm. the, the the route, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then pass that to another API for mm -hmm. like gas stations. Yeah. And so we have a search API that allows you to basically filter along that route. Yeah. Um, and as you move along that route, you can optimize for that search as well. So directionality matters, and then you can do uh, you know, the isochrone or route range where you're saying, I've only got five yeah. minutes left of charge. Mm -hmm. How far can I get? What's the nearest gas station? You end up mm -hmm. filtering down into a very specific set of results. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it, it, if you have your own data sets, that's where it gets really interesting. Mm -hmm. And where the Azure Cloud is, uh, you know, this is where we're making our, our, our hallmark, right? Mm -hmm. It is your data. You put it on yeah. our map, it's still your data, right? You control your data. Our development team doesn't even have access to it, right? This is all partitioned into your subscriptions. Mm -hmm. You want to use it in conjunction with Azure Maps. We have a set of APIs for you to do that. We have a, a web SDK that you yeah. can uh, visualize that data and do all kinds of like really cool graphics mm -hmm. and layers and yeah. animations, and that's really cool. We have an Android SDK now that allows you to do that on mobile devices. Mm -hmm. And all of that is still controlled by you as a customer. Like that is your data. We respect that. Yeah. We have all of the compliance factors mm -hmm. that Azure stands by in terms of security, GDPR for privacy, uh, and even geopolitics, right? Like we're a mapping company. As you start to yeah. distribute your data into other countries, mm -hmm. it's important to understand the rules and regulations. Uh, if you go into a country like India, for example, like mm -hmm. India has very specific rules on what they want their country to look like. And so you need to respect that government's view of how their country borders yeah, look yeah. like. So are you saying that we are doing the, not the filtering, but we're actually exposing a set of tools that allows our customers to not display data that shouldn't be in that Exactly country? right. Okay. So we, we will provide the, those variant views mm -hmm. for the different parts of the world where it's important for our customers to be able to distribute. So okay. as you are distributing in these various regions, you can reside with confidence that you know Azure Maps mm -hmm. will take care of that for you. Yeah. yeah. So you, you alluded to uh, something that I was about to ask, which is um, as the case. Yeah. And my question was the next question was to ask is um, you know who, who who is actually the person the persona we're targeting with Azure Map? Who's going to use it? So there's the the final user, the one operating the application, right? So it's going to be the final customer is going to be the one watching the map and using the, the the interactivity that you build as a as you know as the app builder, but the end of the Azure Map service itself is for developers, right? It is absolutely for developers. So we have we have a set of SDKs, like different languages. Uh, we so right now it's all TypeScript and JavaScript. Okay. So okay. the Web SDK, uh, we actually just unleashed 2.0, um, okay. and the 2.0 release is is significant. I'll get back to that. Yeah. Uh, and an Android SDK, and okay. so we have yeah. Web and Android today mm -hmm. as our SDKs that are rolled up, and then the services are available through REST interfaces. Okay, like classic. Yeah. So yeah, you just say like you're gonna talk about yeah. details yeah. about the V2, right? Yeah. So V2 is super important because it actually allowed us to do some different things. And so mm -hmm. we don't like to version SDKs because you end up leaving people behind. But in this one, we, we had a very good reason, uh, and that was uh, Active Directory integration. This is important mm -hmm. for security measures, right? So today in our Web SDK 1.0, mm -hmm. um, the keys are, and this is. The, the keys in order to access our service is pretty typical in the map space. Yeah. You just have a key and it's JavaScript and you make queries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but those are, those are susceptible to um, being stolen. Mm -hmm. And so with Active Directory integration, we actually have a super tight security loop, right? So you create your own tokens in an anonymized fashion, for example, mm -hmm. um, and that token can expire however long you'd like it to. Okay. So once a token's created, it could be 30 minutes, it could be you know, 10 minutes, whatever mm -hmm. it is, and it'll only run yeah. for that long, and then yeah. it expires. So if someone takes it out of a web page, it doesn't work anymore. So mm -hmm. you're in control of that. We also have uh, the Active Directory for user login. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you want to create a login to know who's using your application, yeah. 
fully supported as well. Yeah, you can like think of scenarios where you, you want the, the the driver of your truck to have access to a set of data mm -hmm. on that map, yeah. and the and the, the the manager of the all the, the drivers actually to have access to way more. So basically, try and, and use AED, right? So that would be the kind of scenario that you can think of. And we'll expand this over time, role-based authentication, and, and like these types mm -hmm. of facets that, bring, that AAD brings all this power, yeah. we're just standing on their shoulders. Yeah. Like this is a giant thing. The mm -hmm. other aspect of the Web SDK 2.0 mm -hmm. is we now have services modules. So before, web, you know, our current map control, mm -hmm. uh, the, one, the one version, um, it actually supported the ability to do tiles, and you do all mm -hmm. this you know, cool vector drawing and all this stuff. Uh, but it didn't include access to routing, it didn't include access to search. Uh, the new 2.0 will include these capabilities so that you can call the routing engine really easy, you can call the search engine really easy, and it's all built into the web SDK. Lots of news, lots of things to learn about. So where should I send people to? Where uh, should they go? So the easiest place is azuremaps.com. Okay, super, so that's super the simple. page you're actually displaying right now? Uh, no, this is actually oh. a, a sample page. Okay, so azuremaps.com like is like top level, here's what the product is. Yes. And in there they'll find a, hey, here's the samples page, right? That's right. Okay. That's right. Can you surf like through that samples page? Yeah, right? absolutely. Show you what you have there? So this, this is, um, you know, uh, some folks on the team put together some really cool stuff. Maybe familiar with Ricky Brundrit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's always uh, he's always busy coding, and so um, this one in particular does that scenario where I'm routing along a route, and I just want to see the points that are in within within a polygon of okay. a route, right? Okay. And so for this one, I'm just going to do a super simple route from Seattle to Redmond, mm -hmm. and what it does is it says, okay, these within a one mile buffer mm -hmm. are inside of that polygon. Okay. And this particular demo, it's fully adjustable, so I can just slim this down to half a mile and you can see the results change on the fly. Yeah, That's and I was impressed when going through that samples page about the amount of tiles you have, so meaning the amount of features. Uh -huh. And there's things like super cool, like the look and feel of the map is one of them. I love the heat map, yeah. it's pretty impressive. There's also that integration with buildings mappings, right? Yes. So where you can actually zoom in into a map and then suddenly you're in the building. Yeah. And I can imagine scenarios for IoT in particular where you have a mix and match of digital twin and things like that will allow you to visualize data in context in your building map, right? The, so the, the concept of mapping is, is layer based, yep. right? And so uh, the advent or of, of layering concepts in maps is, is pretty mm -hmm. well known. It's just being able to do it at this scale and this speed is what's different yeah. in, these days. And so you're absolutely right. Like I can, st I can see the whole world. I could zoom down to a building and then additional zoom levels and layers allow me to go into the building and look at like indoor maps yeah. and things like that. Absolutely. I love it. We're double clicking though. Uh, we are, <laughs> we are. But We're you know, passionate it, about the thing. We are and you know, I want to make sure that we talk about some of the new stuff. Yes. Like our spatial operations. Mm -hmm. Like the spatial operations stuff is super killer, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that allows us to do geospatial compute and spatial yep. analytics on data. And this is, uh, you know, sort of the foray into IoT, yes. right? Like, how do we fit in the IoT team, right? Yeah. And so the, the, the play for IoT really started with sensor fusion. So mm -hmm. taking probes of GPS data, if you take enough of those at, at a massive penetration, turns out people stay on roads and they stay on sidewalks and you could create what is effectively a digital map. Yes. Right? Um, but now, being part of the IoT team, mm -hmm. we've come up with this concept called the location of things. Mm -hmm. And the location of things is really about taking that data of location in a sensor yeah. and understanding it over time. And so how, is, how are things changing on the ground for a particular thing, whether it's mobile or not? Uh, and this goes into our spatial operations as well with our geofencing mm -hmm. API. So the geofencing service allows you to basically, like let's say you have a bulldozer yeah. on a construction site. Yeah. That shouldn't leave the construction site. Shouldn't. But if it does, you can kick off an alert because we're tracking that thing. There's an yeah. invisible fence around it. Uh, one of my favorite ones is uh, the college dorm with the Red Bull vending machines, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so uh, these vending machines, uh, gets, turns out they get stolen uh, from time to time. And if they end up leaving the building, an alert can be kicked off. Yeah, so and it's so funny they move around, but like if they stick yeah, out, okay. like something should move, something shouldn't move, and and so the idea is like being able to, and so we're we're working through concepts in IoT that allow for not just spatial analytics, but being able to track things, find out where they are, where they were, where they've been, mm -hmm. and ultimately, if we move fast enough, where they're going, yeah, right, that's where we want that predictive nature of location and be able to tell things in the future.
So it's great. We're going to have like plenty of other episodes on the IoT show uh, talking about Azure Maps and yeah. the, all these functionalities. Uh, we have some uh, good news for you in preparation. And actually, there's Pamela sneaking in because she has some announcements for you guys. Hey, guys. Uh, so thank you, Chris and Olivier, for giving an overview of Azure Maps. If you're interested in actually learning and deep diving into how to build an end-to-end -end solution uh, with Azure Maps. We're going to be doing that March 6th. So it's perfect for developers, architects, uh, technical decision makers who are super interested in learning more. And it will be live. So it's a perfect opportunity to not only see how to build an end-to-end -end solution, but a perfect opportunity to be able to ask questions uh, from experts. So tons of cool demos coming on the IoT show. Live uh, session coming soon as well in the Deep Dive series. Chris, thanks a lot for that uh, overview yeah. of Azure Maps. Thanks for having me. Everyone, don't forget to subscribe and uh, to follow the IoT show.